If you're a video editor looking to make passive income and also speed your workflow, then Wobrix are the way to go. Today I'll be teaching you how to make this iPhone notification logger in After Effects, and I'll be teaching you how to create your first product page so you can start selling them. So what's a Mobert? Mobert stands for Motion Graphic Templates. A good example of a Mobert happening is when a nameplate pops up on TV. They don't create the same animation every single time, they create a template so they can keep reusing the same animation easily. Over the past year alone, I've been able to make over $5,700 just off Mobert alone. This subscribe animation is a perfect example of a useful Mobert that I've made. It allows you to add subscribe animations to your videos for all types of social platforms. All it takes is a great idea. And for these type of tutorials, I have the project link in the description. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to open up After Effects. We're going to create a new composition. We're going to call it Main. We're going to set the width to 1920 and we're going to set the height to 1080. And then we're going to make the duration around five seconds. We're also going to make the frame rate 67. And then we're going to press OK. And as you can see, I have this essential graphics panel over here. And if you don't have this essential graphics panel, you can go over here to window and just select this essential graphics panel. We're going to need it later. Okay, so what we're going to need now is that we're going to need a reference so we can accurately make it as realistic as possible. We're gonna press copy image and we're going to head back into After Effects. Now this is less of a self plug and more of it actually being useful, but I'm going to be using the extension that I created called Note Clips. And what note clips basically is, is that it is a note taking extension. So I'm gonna create a new note and I'm gonna press paste for the image. And now we have our image inside of our editing program. It just makes it easier for me to follow along so I don't have to keep on alt tabbing. Preferably though, I think I want an even bigger one. Yeah, this one's good. And paste. Good, good. I like this one a lot better. So the first thing that we need is kind of like this rectangular rounded background. So we're going to long press the rectangle tool. We're gonna to go to rounded rectangle. And then we're going to try to recreate that same thing. We're going to put it in the center. I want the anchor point for the rectangle to be in the center of the rectangle. So we're going to go over here to layer. We're going to go over here to transform. And we want to say center anchor point and layer content. And that'll put the anchor point in the middle of the rectangle. So and then we're going to go over here. We're going to add these rounded edges. So we're going to go over here to rectangle one, rectangle path. And we're going to increase the roundness to around 70. We're going to change the fill to be like a white and we're going to change the opacity and to be 50 percent so it's around something like that i think it's a little bit even more actually so we're going to say 80 percent, and then we're going to rename the shape layer box so my approach to this right now is i'm going to make an identical copy of the notification and then we're going to make it so that you can change some of the elements programmatically now the next thing that we have is this kind of icon over here we're going to get an iMessage logo we're going to press save so we're going to take this iMessage logo and we're going to drag it into after effects we're going to rename it logo and then i'm going to scale it way low way way low we're going to zoom in a little bit and then we're going to place it at the top. It's kind of a separation between the header of the notification and the rest of the message. So we're actually going to add another rectangle and then we're going to put it over like this. So we're gonna basically cut the rectangle in half. Don't worry about the specific dimensions because we're gonna be using this as a mask. So I'm gonna call this top box and then we're going to take the track mat and place it on the box and basically what a track mat is is basically saying you know i only want it over a specific layer and then we're going to re-enable the other one and then we're going to put the top box below the logo you can't see it right now but if i take off transparency you can see a little bit better is that we basically cut it in half and the track mat kind of just makes it so that the box kind of stays within the bounds of the layer that you set it to so the next thing that we're going to add is we're going to add the header of the notification it's usually in all caps so now we're just going to take the text tool click on it and just say messages then we're going to place it next to the messages so i like to be accurate i'm going to try to get the exact fonts that the notification is in. So let's go find that. It's SF Pro Display. This cool guy on GitHub has all the fonts for display, so you can just download it. Everyone say thank you to Stop Peep Shot Sagu. SF Pro Display. I'm just gonna use regular. We're gonna take off the stroke. There's no stroke here. And the fill is kind of just like a black, but it's not completely black. So I'm assuming it's transparent. So we're gonna make that smaller. So you're gonna want the text to be left a lot. You're gonna want to click here because say, you know, you have it all ready. And then in the future you decide, you know, you wanna change the notification to say phone instead of messages. If you type phone, it's put in all caps. It's going to be not at the left of the logo, but instead it's going to be going from the center out. You want it to go from the left to the right. So I'm gonna press left align text. I'm gonna put it over here. And then now say if I change it to phone, 
is going to be right where it needs to be to the right of the logo. And like I said, it's not completely black. I'm assuming like it's like 80% opacity, but it looks grayish. So let's also make it gray. It's also a bit smaller, so we're gonna. All right, cool. Next thing that we need to add is the time. So we're just going to take the messages text and we're just going to press control D to duplicate it because we want the same exact font and we're going to put it to the right. Now, differently, you don't want it to be left aligned or center aligned. You want it to be right aligned because if it's left aligned, it's going to be always, say one minute ago, it's going to be some distance away from the right side. But if you right align it and put it to the side, now, whenever you change it, now all of a sudden I want to change it to one hour ago. It'll always be that same distance from the right. It'll be perfect. Change it back to one minute ago. All right, the next thing that we're going to add is that we're going to make a little header. It says book dinner reservations. So we have two different ways that we can approach this iPhone notification. We could either cater it for messages. So it has a name and uh, some text, or we can cater it for how the reminders are set up where it only has the heading. We're going to go ahead and just cater it for reminders. Definitely subscribe because I'm going to be going over more advanced techniques where you can make the box the size dependent on how much text is inside. Now, if you don't want to wait for any future videos, you can check out my advanced logo course that's on Gumroad. There is one logo that's generated me over $3,000 and I teach you how to create a basic version of it in this course completely from scratch. Like I'm talking baby steps. So if you want to check that out, it'll be in the description. All right, let's get back into it. We're going to add another text over here. We're just going to say book dinner reservation. And we're going to make sure that the paragraph is set to left aligned. And then we're going to put it to the left over here in the center. And then we're just going to make it bold. We're going to make it like that. And as you can see, it's not gray like the others. It is straight black. So we're just going to make it straight black. So I'm going to change the opacity from the top box to around maybe 45 instead. Yeah, it looks a little bit more subtle, but it's a lot better. All right, now we're pretty much done with the layout. It's time to start adding the animation and turning this into a mogul. What I have planned is I'm gonna make the box come from the top and then I'm going to animate the text so it looks like a typewriter. So we're going to make a new null object and then we're going to take all of these layers, press shift to select more than one layer. So we're going to make this parent null. We're just gonna call this null. So we're gonna put a keyframe at the beginning and we're gonna put a keyframe around 30 frames. And we're going to go back to the first keyframe and put the keyframe up. Basically, since I've parented all these layers to the null object, whenever I move the null object, the rest of the layers will follow along with that null object because these are children to the parents. Then we're gonna put another keyframe at 430 frames. And then we're going to put another keyframe at the end. And then at the end keyframe, we're gonna put it back up. So it looks like this right now. The message box comes from the top, goes to the bottom. And then after five seconds, it goes back to the top. It looks a little bit blocky right now, so we're gonna smooth in the position keyframes a little bit. So we're gonna select the position attribute, go to right click the keyframes, go to keyframe assistant and click easy ease. And if you play it immediately, you can see a little bit of easing already happening. I want to exaggerate it a little bit more. So I'm going to select the position attribute. I'm gonna go over here to graph editor, and then I'm going to click this box over here. And then I'm gonna drag the second paddle to the left. And I'm going to do the same thing for the second pair of keyframes, except I'm going to take the left paddle and put it to the right. And basically what this graph is, is speed. So you're saying you want the speed to be fast at first and then slow down. And same thing over here. You want it to be slow at first and then gradually build up. So let's press play and see how it looks like. So I think it's a bit too fast. I'm going to move the keyframe to be at one frame and Seven keyframes to be at four frames. All right, let's check it out now. Smooth. And then we're gonna add motion blur to be even smoother. So to add motion blur, you're going to go over here, enables motion blur for all layers, click that. And then you need to select the layers that you want the motion blur to be. If you don't see a motion blur icon, go down here and click toggle switches and modes. And you'll see the motion blur option for each of the layers. So I'm just going to enable it on all of them. All right, now it's time to add even more animations. I would like for this box to be animated. And what we're going to do that is that we're going to use Animation Composer. It is by far top five extensions that I've ever used for free. It is so good. So we're gonna go over here to window. We're going to go to Animation Composer. A link to Animation Composer will be in the description. If you're not using it, I don't know what you're doing. So Animation Composer looks like this. I'm going to press tilde. Tilde is this key right here. And what tilde does is that it basically maximizes the panel. I'm going to maximize the panel for Animation Composer just so we can see everything that's going on. 
So we're going to go over here to the starter presets, and then we're going to go to the transitions text layer. We're going to animate the characters. And as you can see, it has a whole bunch of previews for all types of animations. We're going to use this simple feed characters one, I'm going to say from start. So now that we have the animation that we want to pick, we're going to click it, press tilde, and then I'm going to go ahead and select the layer that I want to apply to. I want to apply it to book dinner reservations. So I'm going to go here, press in, and now it's going to apply the preset. That looks solid. I'm gonna do the same thing to the messages text layer as well. I'm gonna select the layer and press in. And I'm also going to apply the same thing to the one minute ago layer. So I'm gonna select that layer and also press in. Nice. And then I'm also going to animate the logo as well. I'm just gonna make it pop out, scale in from the sensor from zero. So I'm going to select the logo layer. I'm gonna press S to enable the scale. And then we're going to add a keyframe around one. And then we're going to add another keyframe at the beginning. And then I'm gonna make it scale in from zero. So I'm gonna put zero for the first keyframe. It's gonna scale in to three. And just like how we did for the position layers, we're going to go over here to scale. We're gonna right click. We're gonna click keyframe assistant and click easy ease. And then now the same thing, we're gonna go over here to scale and open the graph editor. And then we're just going to make it go fast and then slow. So it looks like this. I like that. All right, I'd say our animation is pretty much done. It's time to turn this into a mogul. So what we're going to do is that we're going to head over to this essential graphics panel, and then we're going to go over here to primaries, and it's going to ask you to select a composition. You're going to click main, and then we're going to name the mogul. We're going to name it iPhone notification. So right now we need to start thinking about what we want the user to control. So I would want the user to control the image. I want them to add their own image, change the app name, change the time and change the message. So that's exactly where we're going to allow it. The first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to add the logo. So to allow the user to change the picture, you just need to drag and drop the picture to the essential graphics panel. And then the user will be able to drag and drop their own picture inside of Premiere Pro. So the next thing that we're going to need to add is the messages. So we're going to go over here to the messages text layer, collapse down into text, and then we're going to go to source text. And then we're going to drag and drop that source text into the essential graphics panel. This will allow the user to control the text inside of the messages layer. We'll just do the same thing for the time. One minute ago, source text. Same thing for the book data reservation booked in at reservations, source text. So I'm just gonna rename these to their proper fields. This one is app name, this one is time, and this one is message. And just like that, we're finished. Go ahead and press export motion graphics template. It's gonna ask you, do you wanna save? Of course, I wanna save, you should always be saving. I'm gonna save it in documents. So now it's time to import this mover into Premiere Pro. All right, so we've started Premiere Pro and we've created a brand new project. Now drag them over into the project panel. If you do add it to your project panel, it'll just go ahead and drag it into your central graphics panel for you. So we're gonna press okay. And as you can see, it's over here. All right, once you've created a sequence, you can drag and drop the mover inside of Premiere Pro. And now let's check it out. Beautiful. So just like how we set our control panel for the users to control instead of After Effects, that is completely mirrored in Premiere Pro for us to change. Now we can go ahead and start messing around with some of this stuff. Say I got an app, I got my own app. It's called Jiggy. The app name is Jiggy. The time ago was six years ago. The message is subscribe. And now when we press play, and as you can see, it is so beautiful. The changes are reflected inside the animation itself. Now, like I said before, I'm also going to be teaching you how to create your first product page. Now you guys know I love Gumroad. You can also use PayHip or Shopify or another service, but I just love how easy Gumroad is. Once you create an account, you'll have this dashboard button on the right. You're just gonna click that. And then you're gonna have your dashboard. To create a new product, you're gonna go over to product, new product, and then you're going to just name your product. I'm gonna be creating the page for the project file in real time. So I'm gonna name this product iPhone notification project files plus mogul. It's a digital product, zero dollars. You can sell your mogurts. I'm gonna to choose to give away the project's files for free because not only does it allow you guys to just learn on your own and it also drives traffic to my already paid products, but it's also a good way for you to get emails, which really allows you to communicate with a targeted audience for people who you know are interested in your future products. Next, customize. 
All right, it's gonna ask you for a quick description. In the description for my other Gumroad page, I simply put a header and the video to what the project file was referring to. Obviously this video isn't uploaded yet because I'm literally recording it before your very eyes. So I'm just gonna add the thumbnail for now. This is my thumbnail. This description worked out really well. So I'm just gonna copy this description. A free tutorial of how to get started creating Mogurts. All for free. For free, woo! And it's bolded. That's pretty much it. So now we need to make the URL. We're just gonna say iPhone Mogurt. You need a cover. Now on the cover of all my product pages, I just like to put an example of what the product does as a GIF. For GIF. Oh God. Now let me get started on that debate. And I pretty much do this for most of my products. I do it for my auto Twitch chat. I do it for my subscribe Mogurt. And I did it for my 3D YouTube call to action Mogurt. I think it's just an easy way for your users to know exactly what they're getting into as soon as they hop into the page. So I'm actually gonna create that really quick in Premiere. All right, perfect. So I basically created a sample background, the checkerboard, and I put the mobile on top of it to give an example to the user of what they're downloading. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to export this as a GIF file. Animated GIF, iPhone notification banner. Now I'm going to export it. Now, GIFs when exported for Premiere Pro are usually very big in size. So to offset this, I go to a GIF size producer. I go to something like freeconvert.com and I drag my GIF to here. And this is to make it so that when people go to your page, it loads up even faster and they're not stuck loading the GIF. Now in this specific case, it's only two megabytes, which is nothing. I don't really need to take the time to compress that. So I'm just gonna upload that as my cover. Perfect. So the next thing is the thumbnail. So thumbnail gum roads are usually squares. So I usually just end up going back to the original thumbnail and just making it a square itself. I just ended up zooming it out or something. I actually make my thumbnails inside of Adobe After Effects. It's not conventional. I still recommend that if you're going to make thumbnails, you make them in Photoshop. But for me, I know more about After Effects than I know about Photoshop. So I make all my thumbnails in After Effects. All right, so I've gone back, I've changed the thumbnail and I've decided this is a square picture that I'm going to end up using on Gumbra. So let's go ahead and upload that. Yeah, that, look, that looks pretty high. All right, so that's pretty much it for the product page. If you wanna add pricing, you can, you can add variations, you can limit the product sales, et cetera, et cetera. So we're pretty much done with creating the page. We're gonna go to save and continue. Now it's time to actually upload the content that you're going to be giving away. So I'm going to drag and drop the iPhone notification mogurt, and I'm also gonna drag and drop the project files for you guys. I'm gonna name it iPhone, notification project files aep all right and publish and continue i'm not going to publish it just yet because i'm going to publish it when i post this video but once you press publish it's going to appear on your page and you'll be ready to go if you guys have any other animations that you'd like me to recreate as a mogul comment them down below and also if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe i also have a shop on gumroad that makes your workflow more efficient and also has a few extensions that can improve your life as well as an editor hope to see you around